Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy and welcome to another ride along. As you know, the last episode, uh, the last ride along, we talked about opening up a shop. Uh, you know, I'm talking about not buying a shop, but to actually lease a shop and, to, and how much it would cost you per month to, uh, to run a uh, legitimate shop. Um, again, it was a legitimate shop. The off the books type shops, we don't we don't talk about that because that's something that me and most of my friends in the business would never even think about doing. You do get some fly by nights out there, which make it difficult for us to compete with, but you know it is what it is. Um, today we're going to talk about when you open up a business and you get your business running, your business plan, what you plan on doing in your business. A lot of mechanics will say, "Well, I plan on doing everything." Believe me, I've been in the business for a long time. I've seen a lot of guys who come into the business and they say, well, I'm going to do everything and I'm going to get all of the best equipment and I'm going to get, not that I'm talking about brands or, or pushing one brand over another, but you know, a lot of stuff is a snap-on stuff is that stuff is out there. You have snap-on, uh, you have Matco, you have Mac, you have lots of other diagnostic equipment out there. So this, it's personal preference what you choose to, to use to diagnose a problem. Myself, I was always a snap-on guy. I always had snap-on. Everything I did was strictly snap-on. Over the years, things have changed and, and the, the products out there have gotten much uh, just as good as the snap-on, if not better. So it's personal preference which way you choose to, to, to go with the tools. Um, I, as you guys know, I do have lots of different tools for diagnostics. It's, it's not just snap-on any longer. I have lots of stuff. Lots of stuff is made by OTC and Bosch. Uh, I have a lot of Autel. I have a lot of... Uh, I'm sorry about that. I just got to get over. This guy's going too slow ahead of me. And I'm running late today. I got to make sure I get there on time. Um, so, you know, there's lots of different things out there and lots of different tools. But the, the thing you want to think about is when you open up a shop and you open up a business, what are you going to do... Um, are you going to do everything, or are you going to specialize just in regular, as they used to call it years ago, tires, batteries, and accessories? My shop over the years, when I first started, I used to do everything. I used to do motors, transmissions, differentials. I did everything. My first shop was a two-bay uh, garage that I had, and I used to do everything in that garage. I did everything that you could think of, I did. Any kind of electrical issues we took care of, any kind of uh, uh, motors, transmissions, differentials, re replacing cylinder heads, intake gaskets, whatever had to be done, I did it. And as I found over the years, as, as time went on, now back in the day, it wasn't really as bad as it is today. Back then, you could find a competent um, uh, machine shop to do any of the machine work that you needed to do, uh, whether it was regrinding the uh, the valves that were burned and replacing valves, or, or or honing an engine out for you and and cutting a crank and and you know doing all of the stuff that a machine shop needs to do. Years ago, I had two different machine shops I used. One was my always my go-to guy, and if he couldn't do it, I had a backup guy. And and he did a job for me, and that job was done. I, I knew with confidence when I rebuilt that engine and I put it back together, and I turned the key in the, in the car and that thing fired right up, I knew that car was gonna run perfectly. Today, it's not like that any longer. Today, the quality in the, uh, the machine shops is absolutely horrible, if you can even find a machine shop any longer. Most of the time, these shops will actually take the, uh, the cylinder heads or whatever they're getting, and they have it sent in from an outside company from who knows where it's coming from and what the quality uh, of the, uh, the parts are, which we'll talk about at another time because today I just, the quality in the parts, and I'm going to tell you how I got away from doing uh, all the, the engine work and the transmissions and the, uh, the, the, the heads and all that kind of stuff, how, why, how and why I got away from doing that. But the thing we're going to talk about today is, is what do you want to specialize in? In my opinion, if you go into a shop and you open up a shop and you want to do everything, you can go absolutely broke trying to purchase all of the diagnostic equipment that you need to run a shop. Um, my opinion and my recommendation to anybody getting into the business is don't go into a business saying that you're going to do everything and you're going to buy all of this equipment that you need so that you can take care of any kind of an issue. You want to basically 
be able to take care of small things, but anything really big you can get into later on down the road. You don't want to burden yourself with all of these payments to the tool companies uh, or to the, you know, for your diagnostic equipment. Because every business, every business, doesn't matter whether it's an auto repair shop or a hot dog sales type place, everybody has what's called peaks and valleys in their businesses. At certain times of the year, you'll be blown out where you can't handle cars coming in. You're booked up a month out. Other times, you'll be very slow and you'll do business, but you won't be making the money that you normally need to make per month to make your expenses. Now, constant expenses that you need to cover are all of your stuff that no matter if you're busy or slow, you still got to pay, such as your insurance, your taxes, your government expenses, um, all your estimated taxes, which the IRS wants every month, and then you have to, uh, every quarter, you have to finalize it, and they want to make sure they have their money in advance. You don't wait till the end of the year, you need to have that money to pay. So those are all the things that you need to pay every month. The other stuff that you don't want to have where it's going to cost you a, a fortune every month is all of the payments on all of the diagnostic equipment. Now you may say, well, if I bought, if I get this tool from Snap-on, Matco, or Mac, or, or Autel, or whatever, it's only going to cost me uh, $100 a month. But if you have multiple tools, such as your tire machine, your tire balancer, your lifts, uh, your compressor, all of that stuff, and you're on the monthly payment plan, you start adding that up, 100 here, 100 there, it all adds up to a significant amount of money per month. So that's that's why I'm saying don't get into a business saying I'm going to have everything I need and go out and spend, you know, a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars on diagnostic equipment and, and all of the equipment needed to, to do everything that a shop needs to do. My recommendation is when you get into the business, get into it and do uh, certain things that you're going to do. Tires, batteries, accessories. That's where you're going to be making your money on, on a daily basis. You're not going to have heavy diagnostic stuff every day unless that's what you choose to do and just do heavy diagnostics. So my recommendation to anybody getting into the business is, is not to go and, and, and do everything, just to specialize in certain things, tires, batteries, accessories. Now by tire, batteries, and accessories, I mean uh, tires, batteries, accessories, uh, oil changes, tune-ups, brakes, all of the stuff that is the gravy work that comes in on a daily basis that every shop would love to see on a, on a regular basis, not just uh, occasionally. My shop, that's pretty much what I do at this point, is to just do all of the stuff where it's my vehicles come in in the morning and nine times out of ten that vehicle comes in in the morning, I get the job done and it leaves at the end of the day. Most of the time I don't have something that's left over, you know, days or weeks sitting on my property waiting to get into my shop. Usually it's I schedule it so it comes in, I do what I do and the car comes in, I do the job, the customer pays and the vehicle leaves and then I'm on to the next one. In every business you need cash flow and if you don't have cash flow, you're going to be out of business in a very short time, such as my friend I told you about the last time with the big suitcase of money, and all of a sudden, before he knew it, he had no money to pay for anything, and he wound up going under and losing everything that he put into it, as well as everything that he had equipment-wise that he overextended himself to do. So a brief synopsis of what I'm saying is... Don't go out expecting to do everything right from the start. Get in the business, get your feet wet, get, get some time under your belt, and see how your expenses are going to be and how much you're going to be spending every uh, month to keep your business up and running. And then once you have your business up and running, at that point, and you know how much money is coming in, you know what the jobs are coming in, at that point, if you choose to invest into additional equipment to handle, handle further, um, repairs at that point you would you would slowly get into it you don't want to go you know full wholehearted into it and do everything all at one time you want to get into it a little at a time you know so that you're not overextended with all your monthly payments all right uh, that's just my opinion and um, you know that way you can you can sustain your business and you can uh, you can actually uh, you know evolve into what your uh, you know what you want to actually specialize in now the reason I'm saying do the small things to get started is because a lot of times and, and I know shops in particular that are friends of mine that don't do tires they don't do uh, balancing they don't do any kind of that stuff that's all the 
the gravy work, I guess you'd say, because that's easy work. Uh, and, you know, you can actually produce additional revenue by just getting the vehicle into your shop, getting it on the lift, pulling the wheels off, doing the tires. You can check the suspension. You can visually see any kind of leaks underneath there. Uh, you could do any kind of uh, maintenance work that's needed, such as brakes, rotors, and all that kind of stuff, too. So that's why I would recommend, if you're going to get into a shop, get, get the equipment to do tires and, uh, you know, balance tires, replace tires, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there is a lot of money in that, which will lead into additional revenue that you can produce just by doing the regular work. Uh, is it competitive? Yes, it is. But you can usually work out a fairly decent uh, deal with any kind of a big distributor so that you can get your tires at a, at a decent price and, uh, you know, and be competitive with other uh, big stores that actually specialize in just tires, batteries, and stuff like that. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Now, a lot of times, and, and this particular friend of mine who has a shop too, he says, well, I don't want to do tires because there's no money in that. But the problem is with, with not being able to do tires, that, now that limits yourself. If you have somebody come into your shop and you have a, uh, uh, a TPMS light on on the dashboard, you know, you, you, you really have no ability to break a tire down and replace a sensor. If that sensor is defective, it needs to be replaced. So you want to have the ability to be able to do that because replacing sensors is something that you'll have on a very on a regular basis as anybody who owns a vehicle knows nowadays tire pressure sensors don't last forever tire pressure sensors usually have a you know maybe five six seven years if you're lucky and then the sensors start to fail and then the the sensor needs to be replaced so you know it does open you up to to doing a lot of other repairs at the same time all right uh what else do i want to tell you too is something else i want to say let me just think the, don't, yeah uh, don't let your tool salesman talk you into getting in over your head i know a lot of guys when they walk onto that big tool truck and they look at all these tools everybody wants to have the tools but you have to control your spending because at some point those tools have to be paid for and uh you know if you're if you're slow one month and you don't have the income it doesn't matter those tools still have to be paid for otherwise you're going to wind up you know, losing whatever tools you have and whatever money you paid into it. So don't overextend yourself. Don't go crazy on the truck. Make sure you control your spending and have a methodical way of thinking of what you're going to do. Like, like uh, for instance, the scan tools. You know, you'll have a scan tool or, or a computer, and that computer needs to be updated periodically, you know. And you're thinking, well, once you buy it, that's it. You're all set, and you'll be good for, you know, years down the road. But it's not like that. You know, you need to constantly have that computer updated and flashed to to get the latest information. All right, so uh, that's it. That's today's uh, topic. Uh, let me know what you want to talk about uh, in future ride-alongs, and uh, you know we'll uh, we'll cover the topics while I'm heading up to work. All right, the next thing I'm going to talk about, I think, is we're going to talk about is um, let me just think. What we could talk about next? We talk about the quality of the parts. Uh, well, give me some ideas what you think we should talk about and what we can discuss on our next ride along. All right, as always, thanks for watching. I'm going to stop and get a cup of coffee before I get to work. And I have to call Mr. Jim the Car Guy again and see how everything is going uh, at home. All right, as always, thanks for watching. And I look forward to having our next ride along so we can talk about other stuff that interests you guys. All right, give me your feedback on this video and let me know what you think and what we can talk about in the future. All right, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.